Since patch 1.10 in Lord of Destruction, the Cold Sorceress has taken a back seat to other early and late game builds. But with the introduction of Sunder Charms in Diablo 2 Resurrected, this build is back on top and is by far one of the best builds you can use for leveling, magic finding, and even PvP. In this video, we're going to take a look at the god tier Blizzard Sorceress along with a fan favorite pet version of the Cold Sorceress, Frost Nova. And I'm going to show you some items that have gained some newfound value in response to the introduction of these Sunder Charms. Let me know what you think they are down in the comments. I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel so far. It's a personal goal of mine to hit 50k subs and I really appreciate your support. And now let's take a look at this absolute shark of a build. Now speaking of shark, Surf Shark VPN was kind enough to sponsor this build video. And unless you want your personal data sundered away, I would highly suggest you check them out as well. Without a VPN, your data is vulnerable to spying eyes all over the internet. But if you're smart, you'll use one of these not only to encrypt the data you send, but also to put the f**ks to the man. Does your ISP think they get to tell you which sites you can and can't go to? Not mine. I mean, it's not like my search history is anything to be embarrassed about or anything, but I still don't want it ended up in the hands of some call center over in India. Additionally, some big companies commit acts of geo-discrimination charging different rates for different areas around the world. But with this VPN, joke's on them. I'll take all your discounts. There was also a lot of hype earlier this year surrounding the global release of Lost Ark. But with Surfshark, I already had access to the game since 2019 when it was released in South Korea. Don't let these gaming companies start discriminating against you too. Connecting to Surfshark is pretty easy. Just load up the app and press connect. The 24 month plan is the best one in my opinion. And if you use promo code Cooley, my link in the description or the QR code on screen, you'll get 83% off in three of those months for free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Connect to over 3,200 different servers in so many countries and on any number of devices only with Surfshark VPN. Try it out today and you too can put the f**ks to the man. And speaking of which, the Cold Sorceress is by far the most powerful build in the new D2R meta. Some people are rightfully calling this build the new Hammered In, as it can easily take on any area of the game on Player's 8 difficulty and terror zones. I wanted to start off by showing a budget character of this build, but uh, it turns out you only need a Sunder Charm and maxed Cold Mastery in that sense. Three days into ladder, this was my setup on the Sorceress, and there was plenty of times where I died and have to recover my body being absolutely naked, having only a Sunder Charm and maxed Cold Mastery. If that isn't budget enough for you, I really don't know what to tell you. As we saw in one of the last videos that I put out, there's certainly an argument for saying that Sunder Charms are indeed budget. In fact, in my experience, cold Sunder Charms tend to drop significantly more than the others. It's almost like they wanted this build to be a thing. Although Blizzard said Cold Mastery is working as intended when this patch launched, I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard ate those words in the future. The real broken part of this build comes from the interaction of Cold Mastery with the new Sunder Charm. Cold Mastery is not at all nerfed with the new 1 5th changes and will continue to rip away monster immunities from that 9 95%. Additionally, minus res from items also contribute to this. Because of this interaction, we can actually abuse just about every Cold Sorceress build, but the two most useful ones are what we'll look at today. Let's start by looking at a god tier version of the latter two season build that Llama piloted to the top of the charts. I'm going to showcase the leveling version of this because it actually has a very similar setup to a full Vita PvP version that I'll talk about later. In that version, we practically sunder our enemies in the blood more in a totally different way, but we'll get to that in a moment. This is a full Vita Blizzsword. We do not use energy shield on this build. Instead, we focus on using our skill points to maximize our damage output from Blizzard. This build will inherently rip every single monster immunity in the game down to negative 100% or the max. After testing a multitude of different items and setups, this is what appears to be the best balance of max damage and reasonable breakpoints. Specifically, we're aiming for 105% cast and at least 60% FHR. There's two new items that have risen to best in slot status when you focus on maximizing the damage output output with Blizzard. A 15% Blizzard Ormus is now worth finding. This is an incredible way to boost the damage output on this build, especially when you put a cold facet in it. Additionally, the bonus to Blizzard that we get from Snow Clash also helps maximize our damage output and saves us a skill point by giving us chilling armor. If we use three cold facets in our gear, we only need cold mastery to be negative 180% to weaken all monsters to the absolute max. From there, we put one point into warmth and teleport, then max Blizzard and all of its synergies. At level 80 
64, you'll be completely done with that and able to put the rest of your skill points wherever you'd like. You could even put more into cold mastery and use gems and jewels in your gear to help with resistances or stats. That is if you're okay with losing a little bit of added facet damage. The best defense is good offense with this build. While she isn't completely squishy, she's certainly not immortal. And you're going to want to practice corralling monsters up in groups and dropping blizzards strategically on them. If you don't care about the loot, you can just do that and move on to the next group and rack up experience at an unprecedented speed. The PvP version illustrates why Cold Mastery is really busted. Historically, communities have instituted rule sets in dueling that limit the amount of cold stack a player can have. Otherwise, it's considered bad mannered. Most of these communities settle on anywhere between 360 to 400 total cold resists. With the PvP version of this build and under those rule sets, you can make a full Vita, full damage version of a Blizzard Sorceress, and even under the best conditions, leave your opponent with very subpar cold resist. We certainly aren't using the Sunder Charm in the PvP version of this, but with the combination of gear and cold mastery, we can actually rip our opponent's cold resist away quite substantially. Although it's possible for your opponent to go rogue and overstack, ignoring rule sets and trying to be BM, it's pretty difficult to stack that much cold resist on anybody's character and still have a fully functioning character to duel with. I've linked some good mannered and bad mannered PvP versions of the Blitz Sorceress below if you want to try your hand at them in the blood more. Now let's take a look at a favorite pet character of mine. The Frost Nova Sorceress is always paled in comparison to the Nova Sorceress, and to some degree it probably still does, but it's a lot closer now with Sunder Charms. I love this version of the Cold Sorceress if you're crushing terror zones on lower player difficulties, usually P1 or P3. This build needs to be a bit stronger than the Blizzard version because we're going to get up close and personal with groups of very tough monsters. In light of this, after we max Frost Nova and all of its synergies and get Cold Mastery to negative 185%, we're going to max Telekinesis and then dump the rest of our points into Energy Shield. Make sure to have a couple of points in your favorite one point wonders though, such as Warmth. The reason this build is cool is because we get to use the new rune word Obsession, as it's actually the best in slot item for this build when considering damage output. By using Lidless on the swap for battle order, we can actually save a ton of points into strength, increasing the survivability of this already tanky build. We need Cold Mastery to be negative 185 because we only have two facets in the gear of this version. We still use our favorite Ormus armor in this build, but instead of Blizzard, we look for plus three to Frost Nova. We give up Snow Clash because it really doesn't help with this build and exchange it for Iraq, which is more synergetic with hitting the breakpoints and boosting up Energy Shield. In both of these versions, we aim for the 105% faster cast rate breakpoint. There are ways to reach 200%, but in my my opinion that's just complete overkill that also allows us to increase our survivability because we don't need any cast on our amulet instead we can opt for things like resistances or poison length reduced the rest of the gear focuses on maximizing frost nova damage maximizing our mana and boosting our resistances all while striking a fine balance between survivability and damage output you don't need many points at all into strength to wear all of your gear with this build but you'll want to split up your remaining points evenly into both vitality and energy whereas this is not a 95 percent ES Sorceress build, you should never put all of your points into energy because you'll always take a little bit of damage to your life total, and that can add up if your life total isn't at a critical mass. When plowing through terror zones with this gal, don't be afraid to crash down on top of your enemies. Just make sure to Frost Nova immediately after and use Glacial Spike for added security. While mana burn bosses can still be a pain, as long as your mercenary has insight, you should always be able to quickly escape if that's the case. From there, just enjoy the ride. When the cow level is terrorized with this build, it can actually be super fun. While the Blizzard Sorceress is certainly most effective in any of these zones on higher player difficulties, on lower ones, this one feels just as good. And you get to use Obsession for once. Links for a variety of different versions for this, leveling, PvP, and MF can be found down in the description. And if any of you come up with any better ideas for those builds, I will certainly update them and give you credit. Which version of the Cold Sorceress is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and helping me hit that 50k subscriber benchmark. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.